Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Broad Stipe. Who wanted me to talk about a film called Godsend. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box, pretty much under any of these videos. And goddamn Godsend, man. Ain't, this ain't no godsend. If it is, return to sender, please. From Parts Unknown. This is one of those films that... If you talk about horror films or thrills of the 2000s and they get a bad rap, it's because of films like this. And the cast, when you look at it, Great Tenier, I like Great Tenier. Is it... He's an actor you don't hear about much. The last film I saw him in was uh, Bridgeby Bear, which is a pretty good independent film from like 2017 or so. I'm sure he's done other stuff, but that's the last thing I've seen him in. And I liked, uh, I liked him in As Good As It Gets. And, uh, I think he's a good actor. I think with the material here, he's trying, but it's just, you can't shine a turd. Uh, he's a husband, a father. His wife is played by Rebecca Romaine Stamos. This is when she had the Stamos as part of her last name. Because this is when she was married to John Stamos from Full House. Of course, people remember her from being in the X-Men films as Mystique. So I'm just picturing her body as Mystique and my brain went to a fog can you blame me though? Fucking hell. Even Blue, I would hit it to quit it. As long as she don't kill me. If she kill me, then sorry. Pussy ain't worth death. But, and you got Robert De Niro. And this is when Robert De Niro must have been really needing the checks. And I read up somewhere that apparently this was supposed to be a cameo, but the director said, oh, Hey, do you shoot a couple more and shoot a, a week worth of stuff? And then apparently Robert De Niro regretted it because they made him in more of the film he was supposed to. And at least in the heavy, in the marketing. I mean, he's on the fucking poster. He's probably in the film for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes at most. But he's all over the trailers and the ideas. Boom, on the poster there. And this is around the time he was also doing films like Hide and Seek. Remember Hide and Seek with Dakota Fanning? Where the girl had her imaginary friend and was killing people and then that that's a I do think that's worse than this, hide and seek. That had one of the shittiest twists. Spoiler for hide and seek because I don't care. That's one where she is talking about her imaginary friend and the imaginary friend is her own fucking dad. Does her own dad, Robert De Niro, is fucking crazy? I'm like... I'm not even going to fuck. But this one, I mean, it's not that much brighter. This is when cloning was much more in the talk, and the... Whether it be in the media and online, cloning was much more of a talking point. So this is about Great Tenier and Rebecca Romaine has this son. They have a son named Adam. I know cloning and Adam, like Adam and Eve, I know it's not the most subtle of movies. And the kid I recognize, he was also in this other film, pretty weird movie called, was it, not Bright... It was a film with Nicole Kidman. Um, was it that? I can't remember what it was called. It started with a B. It was one word. And he was like the reincarnation of her husband. But he was a little kid. And this is a weird, weird ass movie. I know Nicole Kidman was in it. And he was like the creepy kid for f five, ten minutes. And it's also... As if they try to shape him to be the next Haley Joel Osment. That didn't really work out. Although to be honest, Haley Joel Osment didn't really 
work out because you look at what he did afterward for a career not too much I mean he did some films but they're not up to part of the sixth sense in terms of terms of success although uh, Haley Joel Osment and even this kid here I don't think they do a bad job for what they're told to do don't blame it blame it on the script and blame it on the director So they're a loving family, and one day there's a freak accident, and the car hits the kid and kills the kid. The parents are upset. Robert De Niro is a scientist, and after the funeral, he comes up to him saying, Hey, I have this really risky venture. I'm a scientist, and when you take one of your kid's cells and genetically clone him. And they say, You know, no, it wouldn't be. You know, Greg Kinnear's like, no, wouldn't be really our kid. While Rebecca, pretty much her role in this is cry. Cry, and then cry, and then cry, and be hysterical and cry. That's really her character, is to cry. So, she didn't really make much of an impression to me in this. Just cry, cry, cry. And I did it, her son died, but like the entire fucking film is just... Other states of cryness like after the first 10 15 minutes this is yeah and before it i forget even from the opening it was a bit weird because great tenir is trying to get home to his son's birthday he's got a present he goes down an alley i thought it was gonna be a scene from fucking batman and some woman's gonna pop up with pearls and then you know be crime alley but he does get a mudding or two. And then this very weird, out of place thing where they're ready to mud him, and the guy stops and goes, Wait a minute. This guy was my teacher. This guy was the best teacher I ever had. Sorry, teach. And runs off with the other guy. I'm like, wh Why? Why was this here? It was only to have a fucking line where when he gets home, the wife goes, what kept you? Well, I met with an old student of mine, and I got held up. Ha ha ha, you did it. Held up, he was really, you know, knife to his head, held up. And if you're wondering if that ever comes back into play later, that guy, the mudding, students even him being a teacher no not really no so it was i guess it's just a writer thinking he was fucking witty and did it seem that had no goddamn purpose to the goddamn story <clears throat> so the parents should we, should we not do this? They decide to do it. And Robert De Niro, like, I guess just because Greg Tenere made a phone call and a guy said, yeah, that guy's pretty brilliant. They're ready to commit to a guy who has this, as he says, it's an illegal venture. You don't have to get rid of your life. I mean, you don't have to go away from all your friends. Anyone who ever knew of Adam. And I'm going to set you up with all this money for a place to stay. And I'll get you guys jobs. Which when you find out what's going on and how much fucking money he put into this. I think there's other ways De Niro could have done this. I'll get to that in a minute or ten. And then it does like this kind of awkward time jump where she gives birth. Then very quickly, cuts to eight years later. And there's the kid again, Adam, the clone this time. And the movie does go at a very sluggish, slow pace. Because it's trying to be a slow burn. The problem is, nothing really that interesting is happening. So it comes off as rather boring. And it's not going to be this nice dissertation of... The morality of cloning. And. 
you can clone the look of the person, but it's not going to be the actual person because the actual person have different. It's going to have different experiences, which is going to shape shape their psyche differently. So, if you turn left instead of right, and you went up instead of down, it may look the same, but it's not going to act the same. And if the kid ever found out, is he going to be looked at as the lesser of a child because you don't love me, you like the idea of him. You're not, you don't care about me, you care about the idea of that kid before me. And I'm going into that, but this movie doesn't really delve into that at all. Because it tries to be... The trailer makes it seem like a horror film, but it's trying to be like a thriller, I guess. Because the kid starts acting weird as his birthday's coming up, and he's going bypass the age that the other kid died. Why the fuck that should matter, whatever. That's just the movie's bullshit rules. Bullshit rules where you're cloning from what a single cell, Rob De Niro said, but I'm just going to spoil it. Fuck it. He's having the kids having these visions, and they're pretty weak ass jump steer type of visions. Like he sees a kid jump out a window to steer him, or there's a shower. There's like a I mean, is he trying to be the shower from The Shining? No. It's just he looks at the shower and the shower curtain opens up and something drops. And these are just shitty looking visions. They're not scary. It's not suspenseful. It's very bland. It's very meh. And he has visions of this kid named Zachary. Who's Zachary? I don't know. Try and do a drum. Robert De Niro's kid. Because Robert De Niro's kid was a psychopath who killed his own mom and blah, blah, blah. Robert De Niro wanted to have his kid be alive again because, like, these parents can't deal with the death of his son. So he used their kid DNA and then meshed it with his kid's DNA so that it would look like the Adam, but there's remnants of Zachary, Robert De Niro's son in there. And that's why the kid's now almost like the split personality where sometimes he's Zachary and sometimes he's Adam. And I mean, how the fuck that all works, I don't know. It's just, I guess, you're just supposed to buy into this sci fi aspect of it. I'm um, like, fucking weird science felt more realistic to me than this. And hey, there are plenty of movies I've seen that are not realistic and I enjoy. But this was, when it's fucking boring, and it's fairly uneventful, and if you go into it for the stairs, it doesn't have it. If you don't, for a body count movie, it doesn't have that. It doesn't really have much of anything. I mean, even if they're going to do with the whole supernatural thing, it could be, okay, is the kid who is the previous Adam going to haunt the new Adam? Maybe that could be more interesting, where the the new, the old Adam doesn't like that he's being replaced, and is pissed off about that, and then the, or the, and then the new Adam's like, well, wait a minute. Well, the new version be it could be the flip side. The new version is having dreams of the old Adam or the old. How do I put it? You'd either have the previous Adam being pissed off that he's being replaced, or you have the new Adam being jealous that these parents, uh, they still love the old Adam more. They still miss him more. You don't love me as much as him. You only want me because of him. So how is that when you don't really have a sense of identity anymore and your parents love the idea of you 
perhaps more than yourself. At least that's where your mind will wander towards. But this is all shit that's more interesting than the movie. And Zachary, like, they don't really explain why that Zach kid was a psycho. They don't even explain, like, why Robert De Niro wants to bring this kid back. I get that it's his son. But if it killed the mother and other people and it's a psycho. It's not like Robert De Niro going to, I want to fix him this time. I want to do he doesn't really go into that. It's just, I'm a father like you and I want my son alive. And that isn't the thing I was saying before. If Robert De Niro is going to have all this money, and they do specify at one point that when Greg De Niro calls the one random guy that I don't think we saw before or after, we may have seen before, but we definitely didn't see after, is, oh yeah, that guy, you know, he's a genius, and he did some stuff, and he got pretty rich. In other words, it was the exposition scene. If Robert Dinner has all this goddamn money, you could pay a fraction of what you paid for this new house and move these people and did all these jobs. I guarantee you there are people out there that would be surrogate mothers and go, hey, you know what? Um, I have a wife. She can't get pregnant. Um, um, there are surrogate, mo surrogate mothers who will give birth and then give the baby up. And again, they... I think you usually get some kind of financial payment either from the family or other stuff. Why didn't Robert De Niro just do that? I guarantee you there are people I just imagine like how much all this cost. They said a fraction of that you could have paid some fucking person to go yeah I'll do it then. They're not going to ask questions. They're not going to bother you. You can raise and check on the kid on your own. So why didn't you just fucking do that? Well, he needed another cell. He's a fucking doctor and scientist. You tell me he can't get any fucking semen, any fucking cells from anybody else? He'll he could fucking jerk off into a fucking cup. If he needs to shit that badly. And use it with his dead son cells and fucking merge it together and blah blah blah. Well he needs a woman. Again there's going to be women that are fucking happy about it too. He's a doctor. You tell me there's no other people he did. He obviously don't care about morals. He did go in and steal this and steal that. Or take a little bit of that no one would notice. Like, it seems like there will be a lot easier ways for De Niro to do this. And also, it's not really the most valid plan because, like, this is eight years of your fucking life, Robert De Niro. Eight years to see the possibilities of this working. I'm like, that's a lot of fucking time. Eight years. Fuck, you do this two more times. It's your ass. And also, like, Robert De Niro's goal, let's say he, it was his kid. Like, okay, it is his kid. What was Robert De Niro's goal? I know he wanted his kid, but was he going to kidnap the kid? Was he going to take the kid away from Greg Tenier and Rebecca and, what, go to Estonia with that fucking lady from Orphan and live in a butt-fucking Brady Bunch from hell? I don't know. I don't know. And like I said, I mean, other than the kid having a couple visions, Greg Tenere asking who Zachary is, Greg Tenere getting mad at Robert De Niro, Rebecca crying some more, the, the kid having seizures, Finally, Greg Tenere is looking into who the Zachary kid is. Finds a nanny who used to know the kid. I find it funny that the nanny almost immediately admits to almost murdering this fucking kid. He, murder or almost murder? Trying to remember if he mur. 
Did she murder the kid or I think almost murdered him in the shower? I can't remember. One or the other. I I don't fucking care with this movie. I just find it funny that she was readily admitting whether the kid deserved it or not. She's still admitting to the stranger that she almost killed a fucking kid. And I'm like... I just imagine if Greg Kinnear was like some undercover cop. And he's like, ah, thanks for the confession. Come on over here. Have a seat. It's Chris Hansen. It's Greg Kinnear playing Chris Hansen. That's the twist. Although that'd be a better twist than this. You know a story is not going much of anywhere when you find out the fucking film had like five goddamn endings. Like five or six endings. When your movie has five or six endings, that means you told a story you didn't know where the fuck it was going. At best, maybe this could work as like a, some say like a Twilight Zone Outer Limits episode, maybe... But it just reminds you of the, the Bad Sea, the Omen. This felt like a clone version of the Omen. You take the Omen, instead of the Devil, it's clone. Cloning procedure. And even the finale, the ending just sucks. Because it just ends. There's no really resolution. So super spoilers to, to explain. But like I said, Great Tenier... I liked him as an actor. He can't save this film. Robert De Niro. I don't think he was phoning it in like other people. It's just... He's playing a mad scientist and he doesn't really... Other than one goofy scene in a car. It's just... I don't know. Anybody could have played this part. Anybody could have. It was a waste of Robert De Niro's talent. Like I said, any fucking person could have played this. And Rebecca Romaine, whatever. The kid, I could deal with. <sighs> Music, sometimes very, trying very hard to make you thrilled, but failing. The direction, mediocre. I mean, nothing really stood out in terms of the direction of the movie. The story is the worst part of the film. And it's just fucking boring. And they said, we well, did a shit ending on top of it. Pretty much a non-ending. So, the how it ends in the movie. Greg Tenier finds out what's going on. Confronts Robert De Niro in the church. Robert De Niro tries to explain himself. When Greg turns, Robert De Niro hits Greg Tenier in the head. Bleeding pretty badly. Going down his head. Fuzzy, woozy, and Robert De Niro is saying, you know, why didn't, why didn't you listen? And also the whole place is on fire. Now, if nothing tells you that there was reshoots involved, this would. Because then you don't see Robert De Niro until the very end of the film. You don't really get back to the fact that the whole church caught on fire. Nothing is really said about that. And Greg Tenier, who got hit in the back of the head, really nasty, almost punch a hole through his fucking head, almost. And he's knocked the fuck out in a burning church. Meanwhile, the, the kid is chasing Rebecca Romaine, and just like how Zachary killed his mother with a hammer, now Adam's going to kill... Rebecca with a hammer. And then boom. Great Tenier happens to be there. Grabs the hammer. The kid kind of shakes it off and goes. Oh it's me dad. How the fuck Great Tenier got there? How the hell did he know they were there? How is he not dead? Uh, does he at least smell like smoke? Anything. And then it cuts to fucking six months later. Where Robert De Niro is in his room and newspapers said he got away and he's looking up uh, the obituaries, I guess, 
for another couple who lost a kid. And do it all over again. Right, there's another eight years. Only this time, when it says people know who the fuck you are, I don't know how the fuck you have the money. I don't know, I just laundered it or something. Swiss bank accounts, I don't know. Maybe. And then Greg and the kid and Rebecca just moved to a new neighborhood. Talking about how we're going to try to make it a difference here, you know. A new change of pace, new change of location. The kid steers Greg to near. Greg puts his hand on the kid. They walk out. End the movie. And I'm like, what the fuck? Where, what is the resolution? Is Zachary still in there? Is one of those things that they just have to deal with Zachary for the rest of their life? And as they're trying to teach Adam the right and wrong? Uh, there's, was there no, there's one kid that Adam killed. Was there no investigation? No worry from the parents of, you know, you killed the kid. You, you both pretty much know that. And I, I like the alter endings. One was that Greg Kinnear did die in that fire. And then I think De Niro, Rebecca, and the kid moved on with their lives. One ending, I think everyone died. One ending, I think... Like, Robert De Niro goes in and he gets poisoned, so he dies. Like, they didn't, they didn't know how the fuck to end any of this, apparently. Like, how do you write a fucking movie and you don't have a goddamn ending to the point you need... F I understand there are alternate endings to movies. But five or six goddamn alternate endings? Five or six different endings? There's more endings. Uh, there's more endings than cuts of Blade Runner. When you're, when you have more endings than there are cuts of Blade Runner, there's a fucking problem. There's an issue. So, there's no resolution. There's no ending. It's it's like he just great stopped the hammer from the kid, and they don't. Did the kid go to therapy? Is he... In an, maybe he'd be put into an asylum? Something. No. I didn't know Zachary still in there. I'm surprised they didn't do like the jump steer ending. Boot to the camera or... I don't know, man. I don't know. When you have a boring, no-nothing movie, and then you get the lame, duff fuck of an ending, that's just the chair on top of the pile of shit. And this shit. God send this shit. 